Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Simona and Platform, for inviting us. Um, last week, uh, we presented uh, a project that maybe some of you know, uh, Casa di Langa. It's a hotel that we did that uh, had uh, remarkable success. But Simona also asked that we present um, just a uh, brainstorm on uh, this, this subject of the new together, contemporary instruments for uh, socializing. And um, I, it's a bit paradoxical that uh, after a pandemic where we were all locked in for two years, now we're all talking about socializing. Um, so I think it's a good thing. So naturally, uh, we came up with the idea of the hotel as an instrument for socialization. The hotel's had a long story. It's been an instrument that's been with us ever since man started moving around and has had different functions. You can read all by yourselves. I don't need to go into that. Um, but um, our perception of um, development of hotel philosophies over the last uh, decades is that up to about 10 years ago, the emphasis seemed to be on urban business hotels, uh, hotels that provided services to uh, clients that moved around a lot, that needed uh, uh, efficiency and uh, comfort, uh, and exclusive uh, services basically to uh, the, the patron of the hotel. Uh, and over the last uh, 10 years or so, I think, um, every conference that I've been to has been talking about the necessity for hotels to offer urban hotels, um, which is very different than Casa di Langa, which is in the middle of the countryside, but urban hotels must provide services to the city and attract uh, the neighborhood into their hotels, also facilitating, obviously, the economies of the services that they offer. And a first example that I like very much is uh, uh, Mama Shelter in Paris. I, I first saw the first Mama Shelter in Paris, which by the way, is in a not a great neighborhood. It's in uh, it's near Père Lachaise uh, Cemetery in the northeast of, of Paris. It's in a very eclectic neighborhood. Uh, the building itself is absolutely nothing to write home about. But they hired Philip Stark to uh, design the hotel, and uh, the hotel has become a place to be in Paris, even though it's not. Uh, Saint-Germain-des-Prés or any of the central areas. And all of it through the creativity of the management, but also of the architect, which gives me great joy to see that architects actually contribute to economic success. So you, you can notice that on, on the ceiling, there's all sorts of graffitis. If you go into the elevators, there's the weirdest kind of data, you know, how many hairs does a donkey have or how many stripes does a zebra have? It's, it's a fun experience constantly. And this place is packed all the time, and not just with the guests of the hotel. And of course, it became also a chain. Uh, now there's mama shelters a little bit all over the place. And these are some, some views of, uh, of, of the various social areas that the hotel offers that attracts people that are, again, not guests of the hotel necessarily. Looking at it, one wouldn't think this is Philip Stark, but the concept was Philip Stark, and the, the hotel rooms are fantastic, by the way. Raw uh, um, um, cement, uh, Apple uh, televisions, uh, uh, face masks on the lampshades. It's, it's very, very cool. So we go on, and Mamo Shelter now has uh, a whole series of hotels all over the place, and I think there's even one in Rome now. And I think they're based on the idea of uh, becoming very social, the new together for urban spaces. Another hotel that I saw a presentation of not that long ago uh, is uh, in the center of Paris, Saint-Germain-des-Prés, uh, the Hotel Lutetia. Uh, Villemotte renovated this hotel. It's a five-plus star hotel. It's got a long history in Paris, and, uh, and it was renovated in a very... Uh, in a fantastic way, frankly. They spent tons of money, and it's become one of the new places to meet people uh, in Paris. Uh, a, a historic environment, but that's been uh, really managed beautifully by Villemotte, I'd say. And by the way, we're, 
our role in this presentation is not to show our projects. <laughs> so I'm showing other people's projects. Some I know something about, others less. It's a little bit of a brainstorming exercise. I haven't been here yet, or I'm sorry, I haven't been yet to the Lutes, but, uh, Lutes yet, but I really want to go visit this. I, I think it's a, an extraordinary project. Uh, the Hoxton in Rome, um, again, a bar that's becoming a, a place to be in Rome. Um, it attracts many people that are not necessarily guests uh, with a different approach. And I think we're seeing it all over Milan as well, that there are many hotels that are opening up and that open their doors to uh, the neighborhood and invite the people of the city to come visit them. When, when you're wearing one of these and the phone starts vibrating, it's, it's really a lot of fun, frankly. Um, it's, it's vibrating right now. Uh, the Hoxton Tucked Hotel in Milan. These hotels obviously offer uh, services for business and, uh, and uh, meetings. Um, but they also offer spas that are often open to the, um, to the out, out exterior uh, population. And they're looking very often to have restaurants that are starred restaurants, that are restaurants of destination, not just of convenience. Ace Hotel Los Angeles, uh, you know, Los Angeles, a fantastic place. And they too are developing a brand. So I've got six minutes, I'll go quickly through these pictures. <laughs> Bowling alley. In other words, hotels are becoming much more than hotels. And I think another subject that I find particularly interesting in the development of um, real estate logics and, and, and um, uh, design concepts is that the notion of hybrid is becoming more and more important. Um, single function um, real estate objects are becoming less and less um, of interest and, and they have much less resilience. Uh, whereas multi-purpose projects increase the, the resilience of any investment that one makes. Um, and I think hotels are becoming part of this, this game. I recently stayed in this hotel. I don't know if any of you know it, but it's in Berkeley. It's a fantastic hotel. It's close to the campus. It's close to the downtown. It was designed in the 1900s, uh, early 1900s. Um, very beautiful hotel. And what surprised me is that this hotel only offers about 270 rooms. Now, we did a hotel, uh, a Hilton Doubletree, uh, with his, which is a 240-room hotel. It's got a small conference center in it. It's got uh, a restaurant uh, and a business lounge. But it doesn't occupy this volume. It's, it's huge, this hotel. And, and it's huge because it has an enormous amount of amenities. Uh, and it, too, is a place of gathering a new together for the city of Berkeley. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much.